So in module seven, we're going to start using conditionals. And, and the first conditional we're going to use is the if. Okay, and that is the, the standard structure for conditionals. Anyone ever done any programming? You've used if statements, if then statements. If this is true, do this. If it's not, do this. Okay? So if then else statements. And we'll get into a little bit of called nested ifs, okay, which is you think about like nesting Russian dolls, you know how one is inside the other. Nested ifs the same way. There's an if statement within an if statement. That can get very convoluted, very complex, very quickly, uh, but we'll do that a little bit later. Uh, we're also going to talk about logicals that go along with if statements, like and or or functions. Uh, and trues, everything has to be true. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, B lookup, okay, and H lookup. These are lookups, so sometimes we need to pull information from a table, like a tax rate or a grade or something to that effect. Uh, we'll use other functions like H lookup. Uh, something called if error allows me to handle errors. And then later in this chapter, uh, we're going to talk about uh, using uh, some count if, sum if, uh, average if statements. Okay, so uh, before we get into Excel, uh, let's look at what we're going to be looking at. A uh, couple things we're going to be talking about uh, functions, and I'm going to show you how we can look at a function dialog. I tend to just be able to, t I tend to just type them in myself. Uh, but some people prefer the dialog, so we'll do it both ways today. That little square up there uh, is the dialog where we put in you know, the condition. It has some information for us. I'll show you a way to get to that. Uh, we're going to talk about structured references when we talk about tables. Talked about this a little bit already. Instead of calling something H2, uh, we call it payroll okay, or pay rate or income. And it's, it's easier to debug formulas. And it works very nice when we deal with a table because it is struct a structured uh, type of data. Um, we're also going to talk, look at some nice tools that are part of a table. A table, as you know, is set as a one entity. It's, it's treated as one thing. So if I add a column to it, it becomes part of the table. And then every cell in that column, that new column, every row in that new column, gets the same formula. So you it once, you don't have to drag and drop it down, it just automatically does that kind of stuff uh, for me, uh, which is very good. And I, I mentioned we're also going to be talking about uh, the OR and the AND functions. So let's go and bring up, and I'm not going to follow exactly, uh, I'm not going to follow exactly uh, the, the, the module, but I do want to show you these kind of things. Um, so before, well, actually, before we bring up uh, the Excel, some things we're going to use when we talk about ifs, uh, a lot of times we use conditionals to compare, and you guys have all seen these symbols before, less than, less than, or equal to, equal to. How about this one? I think I might have mentioned it earlier when we have a less than symbol and a greater than symbol. What's that mean? That's kind of not equal to, <coughs> exactly. It's not equal to this value. Uh, so we'll use that. Uh, how about and and or? Can we talk about and and or? We're going to do that in a second, but what about and and or? What about and and or? What's the difference with and and or? What do you think an and function means both things have to be true for the statement to be true? An or function means one of the two things have to be true. So uh, instead of going through these tables, let's just go to the case uh, and start with that. So what I'd like you to do is go to Blackboard go to module tutorials we're going to go to module 7 uh, and module 7 data files and we want to go to the tutorial so we'll bring up employees workbook Okay, so enter your name in author and enter the date in today, or today into the date. Okay, let's go to employee data. And you'll see inside employee data we already have a table, okay, a structured table that they've set up for us. And it looks like what this table is, it's employee data. So we have 
the employee's last name, their hire date, their birth date, gender, <coughs> location, their status, boom, 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 life insurance, pay grade, all those good things. So I'm going to add a table or a column to this table, and I'm going to go over here into N2, or N1 actually, and I'm going to type in life insurance premium. Okay. And I want you to notice what it does there. Excel immediately recognizes it as, hey, this is part of the table. So it gets the, it extends the range of the table, another column, and it also gets the table style, okay, and all, all the rows associated with that. Now what we want to put in here is if the person has elected life insurance premium, we want to charge them, it looks like 1% or, yes, one-tenth of 1% 1 of their annual salary. If they haven't chosen life insurance, uh, we don't want to charge them. So the, the field that we want to look at is H, column H, where they say additional life insurance, yes or no. So what function do you think we're going to use to do that? We only want to put in here multiply annual salary times 0 .0001 if they've selected life insurance. So that sounds like a condition. We only want to do it if this condition is met. So let us go in here. Let's go to uh, function. Okay, I'm going to go over here to the, the function of, by the formula bar. You see that little f of x where I could do. Uh, so that's one way I can get to this dialog. The other way I can get to this dialog that I'm on right now is if I go up to insert, uh, insert. insert function here. Oh, it's under formulas, I'm sorry. So under formulas, I can go to insert function. And I could also just start typing a function, but let's, let's just go to the function, okay? So come up with this dialog one way or the other. Now what's nice is Excel groups these functions. Right now, we're in the category most recently used. So this is like, you know, when you're, you're on your, your phone, it's like recent contacts, like people you've texted frequently, okay? Uh, so recent, you, recently used or most commonly used uh, 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 functions are in here. But we can also look at a category, and you can see there's financial, there's date and time ones, there's statistical, there's lookup, which we'll talk about database. What we're looking for right now is logical. Okay, logical are conditionals like and, or, and we're going to look at if. Okay, if is the one we want to look at now. So I'm going to click if, click OK, and it brings up the dialog. And if you see, you know, it starts, we start to build that function over there in the column. You see it says equal if, open parenthesis. Okay, and if you remember uh, from this the first time, uh, anytime we have a bull, that means that it is required, right? So what we're doing with the if statement is we want a logical test, okay? We want some kind of logical test. We need to compare something to something, and if that statement is true, we're going to do whatever we put in value if true. If it's false, if it's not true, we're going to do whatever's in value if false. So in this case, I want to evaluate, okay, I want to evaluate whatever is in H2. So I'm going to type in H2, and I'm going to put in equal, and because it's a text-based field, not a numeric field, what do I want to put around the Y? I want to put what? Yeah, I want to put double quotes around the Y. So I'm going to say, if H2 is equal to Y. Now, what you can see is it's evaluating that right now because it's saying, hey, H2 is equal to Y, so this is true, okay? So it shows over here, this is going to be true. If it's true, if they have life insurance, if they want, if they've selected life insurance, I'm going to come down to this next box, and I'm going to say take K2, multiply, that's the asterisk, 0 0.001. If it's false, I'm going to put in 0. So the box also shows me, 
okay? It's true, so we're going to put in 85 in this case, and the result of this function is down here, <coughs> the formula result is equal to 85. So let's click OK. Okay, and what I want you to see is automatically we put that function into N2, and it copies it automatically down to everything because the table says, hey, this thing is structured. It's going to have the same attributes as everything in this column. Uh, if we look at, if we look at uh, the next one, okay, Overton, they didn't select additional life insurance, so we see a zero. Okay, so the function is happening as normal. Now, what I like to do, what I typically do, but it depends, this is to each their own, right? Uh, what I like to do is I like to type it in. Okay, I like to, instead of using the dialog box, I typically type it in. So let's type this one in too. So we're going to say equal if, open parenthesis, and you see it reads ahead. It says, hey, what's the logical test? So I'm going to say if h2 is equal to y, comma. Now whatever's after the first comma is what we do if it's true. Okay, so... After the condition, the first comma, the first argument is what we do if it's true. And I think we said we're going to take k2 times 0 0.001. If it's not true, I'm going to put in 0. Okay. And I hit Enter. Okay, and it copies that down as well. All right, so it's pretty simple. You can see the branching logic uh, that's being used there. And if I, if I were to say that, you know, for example, that, that Hovey all of a sudden said they don't want life insurance, I hit an N there, and you see now their life insurance premium goes to zero. So that's what's one of the nice things about a, a, um, a uh, 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 if statement or, or spreadsheet, okay? Um, Let's also add a condition here. We want to provide a 401k contribution to employees that are full-time but have also worked here for longer than a year. Okay, so if they're here for uh, less than a year, we don't make the contribution. Okay, so we're going to use another if statement, but we have to look at two conditions as being true. Both conditions have to be true. So let's go up to O1, and let's put it here 401k, uh, let's just put 401k. Okay, So we're going to contribute, what are we going to contribute? contribute? Let me look here. We're going to contribute 3% of the salary if it's a full-time employee and they work here for more than a year, okay, or one year or more. I think it's one year or more. Um, so for example, this Austin, this Hanson person here is full-time, but they haven't worked here for a year or more, so they wouldn't get a contribution at this point. What should I use to do this? What, what do you suggest I use to do this? <coughs> so I need to ascertain the value of both fields. And they both have to be true. So what function do you think I'm going to pair with the, the if statement? I'm going to use the and function, OK? So let's do it. Let's, uh, let's hit our insert function. And we're going to go to our if, OK? Now the function for and is simply and, okay? And the syntax looks like this. So I'm going to type in and, open parenthesis, and when we have an and function, uh, we put in as many things as we want, not just two conditions. We could put in 20 conditions, okay? And they're all strung together by commas. So we'd say all 20 of these conditions have to be true, okay? For example, winning a Powerball, your first ball has to match, and your second ball has to match, and your third ball has to match, right? That would be a, a, an and condition. So we're going to say they have to be both full-time, so that would be G2 
has to equal ft, comma, years of service, which is m2, has to be greater than or equal to 1. in parenthesis. And it's telling me for this guy it is true because they've been full-time and they're here a year. So if they're full-time, they're here a year or more, I'm going to put in here their annual salary, which is K2 times 0.03. If either of those conditions is false, I'm going to put in OK, uh, zero. I click OK. And you'll see now uh, this person, Hansen, is not getting a 401k contribution. Why? Because the years of service is zero. Uh, how about this person? They've worked here four years. Why are they not getting a 401k contribution? Because they're part-time. They're part -time. So in any condition, all the conditions have to be true for us, okay, for us to return a true value, okay, for us to return a true value. Uh, let's look at one where the or condition might make sense. Um, we only want to give, we're going to give pay increases this year of, let's say, 2%, economy's tight. Uh, but we only want to give it to people that are either full-time or they work from home. Okay, I guess if they're working from home, uh, their you know, location is home, they're not consuming any resources. So, you know, we're going to give them a pay increase either. So full-time people or people from working from home, whether, no matter what their status is, is going to get a 2% raise. So let's go over to P1, and let's put in here annual increase. So for this one, what function do you think I'm going to use in combination with my if statement? Or. I'm going to use or. I'm going to go to my function. I'm going to click if because that's one of the most recently used. I'm going to put in or. And then the conditions, and with or condition evaluate true, only one of whatever you string together in there has to be true. As soon as one's true, it's all true. There could be 30 things in there, 29 are false and one is true. That condition evaluates the true. Okay, or means one or the other. Okay, doesn't matter which one. As soon as one's true, the whole condition is true. So we're saying or, and we're going to look at status. If G two is equal to full time, comma, or location, which is F two, is equal to home. H-O-M-E. If that is the case, I'm going to take the annual salary once again, K2 times 0.02. If not, I get a big fat raise of zero. I click OK. And you'll see Van Curen is not getting a raise because, well, he's part time and he also does not work from home. Um, so neither of those conditions is true. Let's find one that's home. Okay, here's a part-time person. 
but their location is home, so part-time is not equal to FP, but home is equal to home, so it evaluates the true, and they do get a raise. Okay, so those things can work together very powerfully. Uh, now, a couple of things that we can also do. Uh, when we have a table like this, one of the issues, especially when I'm talking about, when I'm talking about uh, evaluating or dissecting an if statement, it's kind of hard to know what the hell G2 is, okay, or what is F2. You know, it's just not a good way. So a lot of times when we have a table like this, we can use something called a structured range, okay, or structured, uh, uh, structured name for these things. Um, so let's do this. Let's do, uh, let's type in here new salary. We'll put that in Q. And for new salary, I basically want to add what? I want to add annual salary and annual increase, right? So in terms of my definitions, that would be K2 plus P2, right? K2 plus P2 is kind of hard to know what the hell it is, K2 plus P2. So what I can use is if I click on the equal sign, and then I want to use the square bracket. It's kind of just to the right of the P on your keyboard. Okay. And you hit the square bracket. And what I want you to note is it comes up with all the fields in this table. And what is it using for the names of those fields is whatever is in the header row. Okay. So for the first one, you see it says, FID, and then you see last name, and hire date, and birth date, and sex. So whatever you put in there is the reference for it. Does that make sense? So for this one, I know I want to take, and, and if I type, you know, it does that thing that you, we like so much. It, it does the auto recognition. So I'm going to type in A, N, so we have annual salary. Now, it's on the one that I want, okay? So I can keep on typing. Or if I tab, okay, at this point, because hey, it's on annual salary, I tab, it automatically fills it. I'm gonna hit this N square bracket, and you see it's referencing annual salary, plus, then I want the square bracket again, and I'm gonna say annual, and this time I wanna go down to annual increase tab, and then hit the square bracket. Whoops, square bracket, not the squiggly bracket. So annual salary plus annual increase. Okay, so this guy was 85,000, he got a $1,700 raise, and now he's at 86,700. Okay, so and if we look later to debug that formula, you know, it's kind of easier for us to see what's going on. It's not K2 plus P2, it's hey, the new salary is the annual salary plus the annual increase. And if I want to change it to old annual salary or 2013 annual salary, I could just as well do that, be more descriptive with it. Uh, what happens in the real world a lot of times is, you know, you're working with a spreadsheet, but you're not working on a loan. You send it to people, you have them enter their information in it. So you have, they may be doing something for, so you want to make it as user friendly as possible. Uh, there is a function in here that I think is useful uh, that's already in, in this spreadsheet, but I think uh, it, it bears uh, us going over. Let's look at this year service, okay? Let's look at this year service. Uh, what's in year service? We're using a function, and, and I don't know if you guys recall, in one of the categories was date and time functions, okay? So this is a, a good function. We already used like today, you know, that was a good date function. Uh, there's one called date diff, okay? And what date diff does is you put in the earliest date, okay? In this case, C2, which was higher date. And then you put in the latest date, AB1, uh, which must be, over there must be uh, today. Uh, and then you put in what formula or function or, or format you want it back. Y means years. What do you think M means? Months. What do you think day means? D means days. Okay. So let's, it doesn't do it, but let's calculate the person's age. 
Okay, I don't think we have age anywhere here. We have sex, uh, we have all this stuff, but let's put in an age field and we'll use date diff to get us there. So I'm going to type in age. And we might as well use the dialogue. So let's go to the dialogue, see if we can find it. Date and time. Man, I don't see it there. Let's see if I can find it this way. Date, diff. All right, I guess it's not in there, but let's, let's enter it in manually. So I'm going to say equal date diff Okay, open parenthesis. It's recognizing it now because it brings up the syntax. Uh, I want the earliest date. So what we compare to get the difference? We want their birth date and compared to what? Today's date, okay? So I'm going to say their birth date, which in this case is, well, let's use, let's use, our, let's use our named range. So I'm going, to, I'm going to use my square bracket, and I'm going to say birth date, square bracket, end. Okay, now I could type in the date, whatever today is, the 24th, is it? 24th of February. But instead of doing that, you know, because the next time I bring this up, it might be the 26th of February. I always want it to be today's date. So what do you think I should use? It always is today's date. Today. I'm going to type in today. And that's a function in itself, you recall. It really has no arguments. So we'll give it open parenthesis, end parenthesis. Okay, comma. And now I want the format. Well, this guy, we'll say we'll know age and years. And then end parenthesis. This guy is 47. This woman is 28. If I wanted to change that to months, of course, we don't talk about people age and months once they hit, what, 15 months after that. It's all years. We put an M. So that person is 569 months old. We can go days. I don't think you can go further granular than that. Okay, so that's a, a good function to use. Okay, questions? on those things. What is the uh, formula for the annual increase that we use? Okay, take a look at it. Okay, we only want to give an annual increase if they're either a full-time employee or they're working from home. And if that's the case, like we're giving them a 2% increase. If not, they're getting nothing. Is that? Instead of putting like G2 in that one, can we put job status in the square? Mm -hmm. Yeah, anytime you have a table like that that has those structured names, it's probably the more preferable way to do that. And I don't know, some of you actually, some of the ones you guys turned in were using them. I don't know if you knew you were using them, but when you, we were working with tables, if you point and click, you guys, some of you guys clicked, you know what I mean, to put in, enter things into formulas. You guys know what I'm talking about? What it does when you do that, it prefers it uses the name. Okay, and some of the, some of the formulas you guys turned in had 
those names. And that's, that's why, because you pointed and clicked. So yes, those are synonymous. It's like an alias. It's like a nickname, right? It's like a better name, actually, right? The G2 isn't very descriptive, but annual increase is very descriptive. I know what the hell it is. So that's the preferred way to do these kinds of things. Uh, the other thing, now, the only problem that can, and I, I didn't want to talk about it, uh, but if I have multiple tables, okay, multiple tables that have the same field names, okay, same column names, like if I had employee ID in this table, maybe I had another table going on, I would have to qualify it, okay? Meaning I would have to give it the table name before the square bracket. I would have to say employee, square bracket, emp ID, square bracket, okay? That's called a qualified preference. You know, say I had an employee table that had emp ID in it, and I had a, I don't know, a, a person table that had emp ID in it. I'd need to, you know, delineate between the two so Excel knew. You have to qualify. Nine times out of 10, you don't have that situation, so you can just use the square bracket. You don't have to put that qualified reference out in front of it. Uh, all right, let's see. What else would we like to do? Okay, so let's see if the slides have anything. <coughs> okay, the next thing, so yeah, that's, so that's called, uh, you know, structured references is what those table names are called. All right, let's talk about, and this is one that, you know, people tend to have some issues about. <clears throat> Sometimes we need to call, we do what we call nested ifs, okay, which is ifs within ifs. And, uh, you know, it can get quite hairy, like you can nest ifs, I don't know, I think 255 levels down, which is craziness, obviously. If you're doing that, there's something wrong, right? Uh, but a lot of times there are needs to do two, three, four levels of ifs down, okay? So if we have something with three or more outcomes, okay, that's when we need to use nested ifs. Ifs work great if we say do this or this, right? Two conditions, two outcomes from our flow chart. But sometimes we have three outcomes that can happen, or four outcomes, or five outcomes. Um, for example, when I assign you a grade at the end of this class, it's not, if it was pass or fail, the if would work great, right? If your grade is greater than 60, greater than or equal to 60, sign a P, else, and F, right? But it's not. We have what? A, A minus, B plus, B, B, you know, all those. So we would have to use a nested if. There's some other, other conditions we could use, like lookup tables, but if we use an if, we'd have to use that. Uh, so one if function is placed inside another if function to test an additional condition. More than one if function can be nested. Okay, so uh, in this case, here's the logic that I'm trying to map. If the person's pay grade is equal to one, we're automatically gonna give them a $2,500 bonus, okay? That's their, their bonus. If they're not a pay grade one, so all of their pay grades, okay? Uh, well, no, I guess it's pay grade one or pay grade two. If they're pay grade two, uh, we're, and if it's true, we're gonna give them 5,000. Any other pay grade is 7,500. So I guess basically the logic is, Pay grade one, 2,500 bucks. <coughs> pay grade two, 5,000 bucks. Everyone else, 7,500 bucks. Any other pay grade, 7,500. <coughs> okay, that's logic. But we definitely have, what, three outcomes. 2,500, 5,000, and 7,500. So how would I write that? How do you want me to write that? How would I create that if statement? How would I create that if statement? What would I evaluate first? Well, I'm evaluating it all the time. What would I evaluate first? What would that if statement look like? So I'm gonna put it on the board. If, and I'm, I'm just gonna say, let's just say it's PG, I know it's pay grade, but let's just say pay grade. If pay grade equals to one, okay, what do we wanna do? What's the result of that? What's the result of that? Grade is 2,500. Okay, 2,500. Now as soon as I meet that condition, I'm done. It ends. As soon as this, it says pay grades 1, 2,500, it's done. It gets out of the if statement. You know what I mean? It goes right to the end of this damn thing. It goes right to the end bracket. However, if one isn't true, then I go to here. Okay? I skip over that, right? Because this is what it does when it's true. And after this comma is what it does when it's false. 
So what do I want to put after that comma? I just can't put in 5,000, I can't put in 7,500, why not? Because it's, I need to evaluate something else again, right? So what would I put in there? I need to put another if statement, inside an if statement. So I'm gonna write in here, if, okay, and I'm gonna to have to use the bracket again, if PG, is equal to, what is it, 2, right? If they're equal to pay grade 2, what do they get? What is it, 5,000? If it's not, what? All their pay grades get? Okay. Now I want you to note a couple of things. How many open brackets do I have? One, two, how many closed brackets do I have? One, two. That's a common error when doing these is people don't have their brackets mapped. Now, what's nice about Excel is they color code it. So, I don't know, first set's green, the second set might be blue. I can't remember what the colors are. Robbie? Uh, if you wanted to add that on, would you just put a plus sign in, like right next to it? If I wanted to add it? Like, if you wanted to add it onto the salary, like the end total? Yeah. So, it was so I'd take the annual salary. <laughs> Plus that, instead of just putting in 2,500. I'd have to do it every, every place though, okay? okay? I'd have to do it every place. So what I'd probably do is just put bonus and then put another field that is, you know, it's annual salary plus the bonus, okay? okay. So let's, let's try to enter this logic in. And I'm gonna do it, uh, I'm gonna do it first by typing it in, but you're welcome, uh, but then it, we'll do it with, uh, we'll do it with uh, the dialog box. So when I say equal if, open parenthesis, okay, I'm going to use the structured name, so I'm going to look at pay grade, so I'm going to use the square bracket, I'm going to use, click on pay grade, tab, and square bracket. <coughs> If pay grade is equal to one, comma, this person gets twenty five hundred dollars. <coughs> comma. Now if pay grade is not equal to one, think about that little that flow chart. We're down over here. But now we have two branches. So anytime we have two branches, it means it's conditional, we have to have another if statement. If, open parenthesis, now the first one was black, the second one is green, indicating that, hey, we're in the second open parenthesis. If, I'm going to do pay grade again, pay grade is equal to Two, I'm going to give them $5,000 bonus. If not, I'm going to put in here $7,500. Now, the first parenthesis I put in, you see, is green. It says, hey, you closed out the green ones. If I hit enter now, it's going to give me an error. It's going to say unbalanced uh, uh, parentheses. So I'm going to close out that second set. I hit enter, and we should see in here, ones get pay grades of, of, of ones get 2,500, pay grades of two gets 5,000, and pay grades of three gets 7,500. Okay, so I want you guys to implement one. Let's say this. Let's say I've designed an annual increase. Instead of doing it the way we did, we're going to give everyone an annual increase, but it's going to be based on your annual salary. We're going to be very socialist about this. So we're saying if 
we'll say if your current annual salary is greater than, do we have anyone 100, over 100,000 in this company? <laughs> do we? Yeah, okay. So if your annual salary is greater than 100,000, you're gonna get a 1% increase, okay? If it's between, <coughs> let's say 75 and 100K, you're gonna get a 2%. And let's say if it's less than 75K, you're gonna get a 3%. Less than or equal to 75, let's say. Okay, so how would I write this? So I'm gonna go, let's, let's overwrite what we have an annual increase. And let's put in our new formula, our new methodology that we're gonna apply. So just delete, whoops, delete all that. So help me enter this. What do I wanna evaluate? So it's an if statement for sure, yes? If, what am I gonna evaluate? Someone help me. <laughs> okay, so I could, annual salary is in K2. So I could use K2 or I could use the structured reference. If annual salary is, we'll say, greater than, we'll say greater than or equal to 100,000. What do they get? How's their raise calculated? It's going to be what? Okay, but I need to say, I can't just put in 0.01 there, I need to do what? Annual salary. I need to say, very good, annual salary times 0.01. Okay, so if they're greater than 100,000, I'm gonna multiply their annual salary by, by 1%. Boom. We're done. If it's not greater than 100,000, what do I want to check next? Okay, you said between, but what do I know if it gets to this part, it's not what? If it gets to this part of the if statement, it's not what? True. What's not true? The first part. So it's not greater than 100,000, right? So I know the absolute cap that gets to here is Nine 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 point nine nine. You know what I mean? Nine hundred ninety nine thousand. So I don't have to put a between here. All I have to do is put what if annual salary. Oops, I need to put my if statement. If open parenthesis annual Why is it recognizing that? You type it all, I don't recognize it. I don't want to type it all, though. No. Yeah, I don't know why it didn't recognize it, though. <coughs> okay, if annual salary is greater than or equal to 75,000. We're going to say their raise is 2%. annual salary times. What are we getting these guys? 2%, right? Oops, I forgot to end that parenthesis there. Times. 0.02. If neither of these conditions are true, what must be true? If it's not greater than 100, and it's not greater than 75, what, what does it have to be? It has to be less than 75. So I don't have to do anything here, I'm just saying, okay, else this, else this. This is going to be annual salary
times 0 0.03. In parenthesis, and parenthesis. <coughs> okay, so in our very democratic way, this guy making more than 100,000 is just getting a 1% raise. This guy making less than 75,000 is getting 3% raise. Now imagine doing that for grade, like, if, like according to our grading scale. What would that look like if I did my grading scale? Like the one is printed in my syllabus. It would say if your final grade greater than 93, comma, A. Else, if greater than 89, A minus. Else, if greater than 87, B plus. Think about how many levels, how many nested ifs that get. I mean, I've written them with 10, 12 nested ifs. Now, there's better ways to do that. We're going to talk about, well, we're not going to be here. You're going to see in the recorded video. What do you think is a better way to do that? Because that gets, look, that's just a three outcome one. Look how hairy that is. What's a better way to do that? How would you do that as a person? Well, how's it structured in my syllabus? Do I have an if statement? Do I have a flow chart? How's it structured in my syllabus for final grade? That's a little table, right? So it's a lookup table. So usually when we're dealing with those kind of situations, not always, but in those kind of situations, it probably makes more sense to do as a lookup table, right? Just like we can do as a, hey, I'm a 94, 94 greater than 93, boom, put an A in there, right? It's a, it's a 73, that's in this range, put a C in there. So we're gonna talk in the video about using H lookups, which are horizontal lookups, and V lookups, which are vertical lookups, which can do that kind of logic, all right? So save where you're at with this, just save it, I don't, I don't know, call it whatever you wanna call it. Uh, and we'll pick up here. What's up? Um, for this YTD summer, says format the word uh, this worksheet I can with to the monthly sorry sheets from ranges B6 to G12. Which, which number are you on? I'm sorry. Okay. Insert a new worksheet. Okay. All right. So is it basically asking me to just have the same format as this? Mm-hmm. But with what, what numbers? Go back to the, the book again. Uh, insert a new worksheet between the documentation and January that has the same content as the monthly worksheet, except the range is blank. Okay. Oh, so blank. it's, it's going to blank it, so you're going to blank them out. Well, you're hitting well. Doubles and triples. You guys are 4-0. Yeah, we are. Um, is in-class assignment... Where are you at? Where are you getting that? North Carolina. Wow. You're got sun. A little bit. Yeah. Um, the in-class assignment we did on Friday, is that on YouTube? Like, I think so, yeah. Okay. I think it's under mod... Uh, I don't know. Uh, look under the part... Under, under tutorial 6, look under uh, part 3 YouTube. And okay. watch. I think it's in that one. I'm not positive. Okay. I'm not 100 percent positive. Okay. It's pretty easy though, and, and look, if you look at it, we only did like the first six steps. Okay. Okay. All right. So